Hi everyone. Um, finally getting to to make a a, a video. It's um, what time is it? Eleven o'clock, Sunday night. Anyway, um, all is quiet now, and I'm in my bedroom. This channel is one I've followed for quite a quite a while actually, and it's called Lord Spoda. And he, he travels around with his wife. They've given up their home and everything. And they, they're travelling around the United States, planning on visiting, you know, almost every town they can fit in. Um, I don't know whether they've given themselves a time limit to do it. But this is what they're doing. And I, I guess their income is now coming from their channel. And it's well worth watching. Um, some of you will have heard me say in a live stream a little while while ago that uh, I watched a channel where they went to visit um, the place where Glen Campbell was born and where he's now buried in the Campbell uh, Cemetery. They've got their own little cemetery there. And when he went looking for the grave, the music started up and it was Glen Campbell singing not rhinestone cowboy and i can't remember what it was but um it made me jump let alone him anyway it's lord spoda who i was talking about i didn't know that he's done a video this video on slab city in uh california and it says it's the last really free city because they're anarchists, total anarchists. Um, they don't pay for any community services such as power, water. They've got no um, trash removal or anything like that. It's just a really self-contained community, if you like, and a very, you've got to be a certain have a certain stoic character to be able to live in this manner. This isn't... I've watched a couple of videos about it um, where they're going to depth about Slab City and they're really interesting. I'm not sure how much in depth this video goes, but we can watch a little bit and then maybe tomorrow I'll find another couple of videos that actually go in to the city and visit the resi visit with the residents, you know, with their permission, obviously. They're toting guns, they don't just accept anybody mooching round. Um and they've got to, you know, they've got to accept you really and trust you to go in and that you're not gonna make it seem um a really awful place to live because it isn't um, some of us might think so, who are used to our, our own home comforts. So let's watch a little bit of this. And um, as I say, I'm not sure in how much depth he goes, but we can get some more footage from another channel on this tomorrow. This is Lord Spoda. I'll put the link to his channel in my description. Of anarchy. Well, not really anarchy. Yeah, it is anarchy. They call it the last free city. The last free city, that's right. Uh, in the world. And I'll tell you more about that uh, as I head into town. But the first place I want to look at is this art installation right over here. Sounds funny, heading into yeah, town. Foundation Mountain is what it's called. They've even got their own autonomous well, you know, library. Look at it. Giving you a look at the sign here for Salvation Mountain. God never, God fails. never fails. I'm going to walk over here and get a closer look. It's right here. They've got their own cemetery, so little cemetery. With the artwork. Salvation Mountain, built by a gentleman named Leonard Knight. Took him over 20 years. Wow. Uh, it's just paint and adobe and concrete. 
he passed away in 2014, uh, but his masterpiece lives on. Look at that. Uh, it's called Religious Folk Art, and in fact the U.S. government has recognized this hmm. as a national folk art treasure. Wow. It's pretty fantastic. Isn't that something? <laughs> Repent. <laughs> Say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. Or ain't that the truth? Well, you might be. Incredible. Now, look. There he is, the little kitty. Oh. He's not scared of me at all. Get him. Little tabby. Take care of that, right? Huh? He won't let me pet him. He always looks for a cat. He always looks for a cat. As he's going round, the first cat he sees. Well, let's see. Uh, I'm going to. I want to back out of here and give you a look at the place as well as I can. Like I said, the sun is low on the horizon, shining right in to here. Maybe you can see this. Are you going to go and anyway, interview uh, anybody? I'm going to head into town now, but let me show you on the map real quick where I'm at. Uh, can you see the blue circle with the arrow? That is where I'm at, in a pretty remote area of California. Uh, Imperial County, I believe, is the name of it. All right, so away we go. Now you're might be wondering about the name. This used to be a, a U.S. Marines military camp during World War II. Once it was no longer needed, the military pulled out, took everything with them except the slabs. <laughs> and then after a period of time, people started uh, moving into the area and it became known as Slab City. There's people who just wanted now, to opt out of society. Technically owns this land. So these people are all actually squatters. Squatters. But uh, California does not collect any property tax. And so there are no services of any kind. No water, no power, no sewage removal. I believe they've sorted uh, no out now a water line themselves. So we'll let that sink in a little bit. The ramifications of uh, a place like that. Well, this is what you get. The people who populate this town uh, are people. Well, it might surprise you who they are. Many of them are vets, doctors, lawyers. Yep, there's an author. All kinds of professional fields, carpenters. Mm. But the one thing they ha all have in common is uh, they don't want to be found. They want to live free of any kind of governmental uh, intrusion, if you will. Now, that being said... There are no jobs here, so very little in the way of money. Is or exchanged. schools. Well, there's no children, Farming I don't think. Is what they do here. Uh, people trade their services, apply their skills, and uh, that's what they use to get what they need. Now, many of the people here are on government assistance and Social Security, but after that, very little money. They have a post office and a post mistress. Uh, there's facilities here, though. There's a library. Um, there's a place called The Range that has live music. Looks like there's a church. <laughs> Now, 
Now, you see the nature of things here, like that boat put upside down. And yes, if you're thinking maybe an art installation... Do you know, it's just reminded I me mean, of that painting I posted however, yesterday. It is artsy. Very artsy. The people here don't use traditional art materials. Clay, paint, paintbrushes, canvas. They use trash. I think he'll tell us in a minute. There's no... Trash is used to create art here. There's no children there. And, um... You remember what I said? There's no trash pickup. So they have plenty of it. In fact, that's a gallery right there. Rising Phoenix Art Gallery. So I guess eventually it will become a ghost town. Things are painted? <laughs> uh, yeah, some more art galleries there. Mm -hmm. There's a little R2-D2. There is a restaurant here, from what I understand. Oh, look, somewhere it's got it where you can There are communities here. Now you're probably wondering about police, that kind of thing. No, I'm no just wondering whether this is the... Is the the town of Nyland is four miles away. Whether it supplies something to no. Regularly come out. Also a lot of border patrol here. We're only about 40, maybe 50 miles from the Mexican border. Then all being said, there is a unwritten code here. An unwritten set of rules that is enforced by the people who live here. So uh, if you're going to cause trouble... You're probably going to get dealt with, and that's by the people who live here. Oh, dear. Yeah, let me go up here and turn around so the sun is behind me, so you can see better. And most of them have guns. If it's a place I'm thinking of. Uh, this is an RV park, California Ponderosa. No, you can go into The ultimate off-grid experience. Slab City Hostel is right here. A hostel. There's also an Airbnb. Hmm. I don't know whether it is so what I'm thinking of, you know. You want to have this kind of experience, to live in a, you know, for a short time in a place like this, there are places to stay here. And for that matter, you can just bring up your RV if you have one and pull up and hang out. Yeah, I'm coming up here because I think the library is right up here. So let me let's see if I can find that and turn around. Oh, I'll be able to okay, tell so where this is. Uh, the sun is behind me, so you can get a better look at things as I drive through the town. That is the library. Um... It goes by the honor system. A lot of donated books. Yeah, donated. Anyway, you're probably wondering about things like gas and um, groceries, that kind of thing. Go to the nearest town, I about guess. Water. Uh, they bring water in on these uh, in these big tanks. There is a communal shower here. So one place to take a shower if you want. Power is uh, gotten by generators and uh, solar panels. So that's mm. how they get power here. That'd work, wouldn't it? They solar panels. They nearby Nyland for groceries and gas. And I'm going to tour that town after here. Uh, the nearest hospital is in Brawley. That's about 20 miles, maybe a little over away. Uh, and it's not completely savage. Look at all those tires. Uh, UPS, Amazon, they deliver. No. I don't think it's so the one I was thinking of. Subsidy. They get stuff delivered to you. And they come all the way out here. I don't, because the one I was thinking of, it's now, not as, as big I as this. Uh, I have to tell you guys the thoughts that come to my mind, and that is. Mad Max. 
I mean, this is totally what it looks like in Mad Max, the movies. Am I right? Really fascinating, uh, because this might be what it looks like. You know, if there's some sort of apocalypse or something that ends men uh, or society as we know it. Ends. Uh, this is what it will look like. Well, I'm thinking. they might be in the safest place. From plagues and bombs. Uh, um, let's see. There are no offic official census figures, like I said. It's estimated that around two people live, or 200 people here live full time. That swells up during the winter when the snowbirds come. If the uh, people from the census, representatives, were to come here, these are the type of people that would just laugh at them, I'm thinking. <laughs> It is a strange, a strange beauty to it, I have to admit. It's fascinating. You can't take your eyes off of it. Well, yes, it's not all little it's boxes of the same the shape and size. And that they have built here. Uniform. Everything's unique. Oh, let's see. Free first aid harm. I guess it's a... A sort of medical facility there. Very minor, I'm guessing. I mean, it's just a total post-apocalyptic wasteland, isn't it? That is so cool looking. The one I'm thinking of, they've got a great big old oil drum thing. Uh, let's see what this Empty. Says. And it was turned into a home for a man because he kept burning his house down. He got drunk and he kept burning his house down, so... Um, they converted this great big enormous oil drum for him to live in uh, with all you know everything he could I need sink, bed, everything this is uh, a restaurant here Church of Enlightenment I mean, that is total Mad Max, am I right? Looks like somebody may live in there. You see some pretty nice RVs. I'm thinking, uh, yeah, these are definitely some of the snow people, or the snow birds. Snow birds. I grew up in Utah, we call them sun people. Because we would see them form caravans and drive down south every fall and then come back up in the spring. My friends in Herba Salt in Colorado used to do that. They used to drive to Arizona and stay there for the winter. Anyway, just uh, giving you, give me a look. There you go, art sale or trade. I'm guessing that uh, everything is paid for with cash here. Yeah. I'm going to go out on, on a limb and say probably no credit card acceptance here. <laughs> Amazing. I right, can't help but be fascinated. Well, we're the ones who are living a false lifestyle, really. I think some of the people here are getting nervous at times. They've gone back to their roots. Because technically they're squatters. Like I said, um, the state of California owns this. And uh, I guess they just turn a blind eye and let them stay here. But it seems to me there would uh, always be the fear of being evicted. I'm not sure if you can see any of this. Let me turn around. Of course, they don't have traditional fences. <laughs> they use tires.
And for all these people, uh, these, uh, this is their property. But like I said, they don't really own it. The state of California does. Crazy. And there's a lot here too. Oh, yeah, you see a kid up here. Yes, children live here. Oh, well, it's definitely not the one I was thinking of then. Where do they go to school? Again, nearby Nyland? school bus actually comes out here and picks them up. Like I said, I will go to Nyland and show you that place next. It's bigger, much bigger than the one I was thinking of, which I'll have to find uh, for you. This is just crazy. Look at all this stuff. Yeah, there's a couple of kids down there. Some people congregating. Can you imagine the life what life must be like for children that live here? I bet they I love imagine. it. No power, no running water. Yeah, but I bet they love it, the freedom. No, no neighbor shouting, you know, get off the grass. Traditional place to go use the bathroom? <laughs> hey, look at this. Now, the sun is uh, blocking a little bit there, but... Streets of Slab City. Hmm. Yeah, somebody lives in there. Somebody will probably jump in front of him with a gun and ask him what he's doing in a minute. As I drive down this residential street, hey, you can see all the trash. I mean, there's there's nothing coming out here to haul it off. So, trash is everywhere. See it? It is everywhere. Mm. See it over here? Just piled up. Uh, I guess I get, get rid of it eventually or bury it or something. Side. of shit behind this wall. Oh. Huh. Like I said, this, this is uh, people who don't want to be found. <laughs> and these are the kind of people who don't care what you think. This is the life they want. I think we'd all like a life where we don't have to worry about what anybody thinks. Definitely not for everybody. Wouldn't we? What do you think? Could you do it? Um, yes, I think so. Maybe with a few more home comforts, though. <laughs> I'd need a shower. <laughs> That's amazing. You can see a lot of the artwork, though. That people take the trash. I'm just thinking, you now, your phone and... Phone and internet and uh, art studio. Dog. He doesn't look for dogs, he only looks yeah, for cats. Seen Phoenix Art Gallery. See these, uh, like plastic tanks here? That's water. That's, uh, water they bring in. See, the one I'm thinking of, they actually managed to get a water line run to somewhere with the help of the 
the local districts. I don't know, government, council, whoever it was. And the camp's a lot smaller than this one. sort of got all the basics, a bit of hairdressers and um, semstresses, you know, okay, dressmakers. Okay, town of Nyland. Nyland. Nyland is four miles away from Slab City. So, Pop population. Uh, this is where a lot of the services for Slab City are. When I say that, I mean police. Uh, the police from this town goes up there and patrols. Occasionally, a uh, fire department, it's a grocery store, gas. Uh, so this is where the people of Slab City come for those particular services, those things. Um, Looks like a town hall yeah, on the left. Here earlier, saw this building. It's kind of spectacular looking. Ooh, geez, big. Uh, anyway, um, about the town, in 2010, there were 1,006 people here. 1,006. 2020, 756. Wow. 2022, 452 <gasps> people. So this town is losing Stalling, population isn't it? pretty rapidly. Uh, let's see, the gender breakdown. 55% male, 45% female. Race breakdown, 57% Hispanic, 39% black, 4% white. I went this way because I wanted to show you the fire department. It's modern and new. So that's what uh, handles this or this particular service in this area. Imperial County Fire mm. Department. Some of the numbers that stick out about this town, uh, unemployment rate is 15.7%. That's really high. Poverty, uh, poverty rate is 61.1%. That's high. That's amongst the highest I've ever seen. 28% um, of the town is married. U.S. average is 52, so that's a bit uh, different than what you normally see. Crime is almost twice higher than the national average here. Uh -huh. It's a high crime town. Uh, the median home value here is uh, 84500 Per house? All right, so um, I'm just going to find the uh, grocery store show you that and see if I can find a gas station too. So you could buy a house for 84,000 uh, reasonable house. Food to go. Well, there might be a restaurant. Let's see. Maybe it's up here. Yeah's Market Liquor. She reminds me I've got to uh, um, use my crock well. pot again tonight. Meat, liquor, cigarettes. So they sell different things there. A restaurant. And they have a motel. I like how he and, uh, every uh, town he goes to, he gives us the statistics. I guess it's open. It's also for sale. And the crime rate and the ages. And Interesting. Uh, I'm going to see if I can find a gas station. And uh, I will see how much gas costs when I'm there. Okay, I did find a gas station. There's one in this town, it looks like. Union 76. Uh, there is the price for a gallon of regular. 549. I think you can see that. Is that? 549 cash. Credit card, it's going to be 579. What's that? Is that cheaper than uh, normal? I'm going to uh, go to one more town 
because it's interesting. Uh, Calipatria. So, uh, yeah, it's going to head there right now. Okay. And we'll right, finish then. The oh, that looks Calipatria. nicer. Now, this town is about 12 miles from Slab City. That looks nice. It's got a few more things here. The bigger grocery store. The town is declining, though. 2010, the population was 7,700. 2020, 6,500. 2022, it had uh, went down to 6,160. Uh, some of these numbers Six hours really and stick out, and I'll explain why after I tell you them. Uh, gender, 77% male, 23% female. High school graduation rate, 57.6%. Those numbers really stick out, and the reason for it is that there is a prison here in town, and they count the prisoners. Not only that, oh. the prison is all male, uh, so it skews the gender ratio there quite a bit. Um, so in actuality, throw out the uh, prison population, there's only a little over 2,000 people here. Obviously, it's the top employer. Median household income is 39,200. Poverty level is 29.2%. Uh, so that is uh, almost three times higher than the national average. Median home value, 148,800. 73% Hispanic, 16% black, 7% white. I'm going to take a look around the town. Um, median age is 34 years old, by the way. It's quite young, isn't it? Now, the interesting thing about this town is where it sits. Uh, and that is 180 feet below sea level. In mm -hmm. fact, this community sits at the lowest elevation in the entire Western Hemisphere. Wow. Well. That's interesting, isn't it? How about that? Hmm? So right now, I'm at the lowest point that is not in the ocean in the Western Hemisphere right well. now. Now, they have a flagpole here that is the tallest flagpole in the world <laughs> where the flag is exactly at sea level. Oh. And look here, I turn down the exact street I need to because that is it right there. So I'm going to pull up to this flagpole. I can see it. See it in the distance on the right. Look at it. The flagpole is 184 feet tall. So the flag, even though it's way up there, is actually at sea level. So it kind of gives you uh, a feeling or an idea. Of being underwater. Of underwater you would be. Yes. <laughs> if you were out on the ocean. How about that? Uh, let's see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drive up to it right now. Let's take a look. Yeah, it's right here. So I'll just run up here and we'll check out the uh, we'll check out the sign in front. See what it says. Another city hall. Right across the street. And the uh, fire department too. It's a nice building, nice new building. Anyway, I think that's fascinating being Shall below we? sea level. Let's have a look. Yeah. Now, it claims to be the world's tallest flagpole. It's not. Oh. But they're claiming it anyway. Let's see, home of world's tallest flagpole, top, top at sea level. The top is at sea the level. The lowest down city in the Western Hemisphere. So, 184 feet one, below sea level. 184 feet below sea level. Now, there you go. Well, wow. to go over here, so I've got the sun pointing in the right direction. What a strange feeling that would be, and, uh, just look up. think that you're below you sea level. up there. So that's where the sea, that's sea level. You can see how far below. I am. That's amazing. How about that? 
so I think we'll end it there. That is pretty cool. And I'll try and find that other town are a nice touch. for us tomorrow. Uh, because tomorrow. We're in the ocean, on the ocean floor, this is uh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, this is what you would see as anch uh, anchors. Okay, anyway. everybody. I, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I'm on, or this is going to be the end of the video here. I'll catch you tomorrow. There's Lab City, I guess. He's using his drone. Catch you tomorrow.